We now return to Yankeeography, the Hall of Famers. Cooperstown is, of course, home to the greatest pitchers who ever lived, from Bob Gibson to Cy Young to Tom Terrific, to name a few. There's also a lineage of great Yankees pitchers, one that started when they were the Highlanders. It all began with Jack Chesbro. He was a successful pitcher with Pittsburgh in the National League, but when he learned how to throw the spitball, he became a terror. He pitched uh, five years for the Yankees. He won 20 games four times, but in 1904, he had a season for the ages. Happy Jack threw 454 innings and won an astounding 41 games, thanks to a 1.82 earned run average. But as great as his season was, it was tarnished by one misguided pitch. He threw a pitch over the head of the Highlanders catcher to lose game one of a final day doubleheader with Boston. This cost the Highlanders a pennant. Jack Chesbro is remembered for throwing a wild pitch rather than for winning 41 games. So where is justice here? New York's loss to Boston kicked off years of mediocrity, but the Red Sox also helped the Yankees return to glory. The purchase of Babe Ruth was the big blow. Then, former Red Sox manager, Ed Barrow became Yankees GM, and he acquired many of his old players. Within three years, nearly half the Yankee team, fully 11 players, were former Red Sox. Amongst that group were two pitchers who would excel in pinstripes, Wade Hoyt and Herb Pennock. Many thought Pennock's best days were behind him when the Yankees acquired him. But Pennock was arguably their ace through the pennant runs of the 1920s. He was considered one of the great pitchers of his time. And like Whitey Ford, uh, Pennock was not uh, overpowering fast. He was considered very intelligent on the mound. Complimenting Pennock's South Paul finesse was the durability and excellence of native New Yorker Wade Hoyt. He was a young kid. They called him a schoolboy. Well, he was signed out of a New York City high school and leapt to the Giants at the age of 16. Following a brief stint with the Red Sox, Hoyt matured into an elite pitcher with the Yankees. Among his six World Series wins and pinstripes was an incredible performance in the 1921 Fall Classic. Everybody knows about the three shutouts that Chrissy Mathewson threw in 1905 against the A's, and they say it's without precedent. Now, Hoyt threw three complete games and gave up no earned runs. While Pennock and Hoyt for winding down their Hall of Fame careers, hard-throwing Lefty Gomez arrived in a blaze of glory. He was the winning pitcher in the first All-Star game. He spanned two great dynasties of New York Yankee baseball. It was the tail end of the so-called murderer's row. And then we became known as the Bronx Bombers. The Yankees always wanted to win the pennant and play in the World Series. That was our goal. From Lefty's debut in 1930 through 42, the Yankees won six titles. Four times, Gomez won 20 games, and he was at his best in the World Series. Gomez's record in World Series play as a starter was 6-0. This was the record for years and years and years. He was, for a few years at least, one of the great pitchers in the American League. An incredible fastball, big delivery, way up in the air, and then came down. He even had more luck life on his fastball and Koufax or Herb score. Not only did Lefty possess a blazing heater, he was also just as fast with some classic one-liners. Gomez, as you all know, was a very funny man. And he was a practical joker. He always had a line. He always had something funny to say. I used to love my base hits because I didn't get too many of them. <laughs> then there's Red Ruffing, who couldn't win a game in Boston. But once he became a Yankee, he had four straight 20-win seasons. Ruffing had an atrocious career record. We didn't get in the runs. And if you don't get the runs, you don't win. And Charlie used to pitch some beautiful ball games. The Yankees saw something in Red Ruffing and brought him over. And somehow he goes from being this guy with a terrible career record, high ERA, to a Hall of Famer. Red Ruffing's on the mound for the Yanks. The McCarthy juggernaut is swiftly and surely crushing the luckless Cubs. Strike out. The honors for roughing continue to this day. At a recent Old Timers game, the Yankees unveiled a plaque in his name. Red Ruffing was a man of great personal stature. He was the Yankee ace, and uh, he played on well into his 40s. 